Chapter 9, The Three Keys Many Hindus don't eat beef, just like how some of Aru's Jewish and Muslim classmates didn't eat pork. Every time it was hamburger day at school, she would have to get the overly chewy portobello mushroom thing that looked and probably tasted like dinosaur hide. Her classmates would look at her pityingly. That sucks. Hamburgers are the best, someone would say. You're missing out. Aru disagreed. Pizza was the best. Besides, how could she be missing out on something she'd never had? Maybe it's like that with fathers? She and her mom were just fine by themselves. Thanks for asking. Then again, a father's not a hamburger. A hamburger was something you could choose not to have. Aru had never had a choice when it came to not having a dad. When she thought about it for too long, she got furious. How could her dad have left them? Aru considered herself fairly awesome. Granted, she was a little biased. And her mom. Her mom was beautiful and brilliant and elegant, but she was also sad. Maybe if her dad was around, her mom would be happier. The fact that someone had dared to make her mom miserable only made Aru angrier. But now that she was staring at the truth, she felt, well, struck by lightning, which just seemed ironic now. She never had a hint that Indra could be her dad. Or had she? Aru had always loved thunderstorms. Sometimes when she had nightmares, a thunder and lightning storm would rise up out of nowhere, illuminating the sky like a lullaby created just for her. Was that because of Indra? But if Indra was her dad, that made Aru a reincarnation of Arjuna, the greatest warrior. She wasn't anything like him. Arjuna was good and honorable and perfect. Almost, Aru thought, to the point of excess. Her mother had once told her a story about how Arjuna was so honorable that he agreed to a 12-year-old exile in the forest just to keep his word. Like lots of ancient rulers, the kings of India had more than one wife, but it was a lot more unusual for a wife to have more than one husband. And yet that was the case in, a, in the tale of Drapada, Drapati, the virtuous and beautiful princess who married all five Pandava brothers. She spent a year as the wife of each. That made more sense to Aru than the alternative. Imagine walking in your front door, calling out, honey, are you home? And hearing, yes, dear, yes, dear, yes, dear, yes, dear, yes, dear. But it was a rule among the five brothers that you couldn't barge in on Draupadi's privacy when she was with her husband of the year. One day, Arjuna was called to fight off a bunch of demons. He had to answer the call because that's what heroes do. The only problem was he left his special bow and arrow in the dining room where Princess Draupadi was eating with one of his brothers. The penalty for barging in on their privacy was exile. Rather than let innocent people get hurt by demons, Arjuna chose to break the rule. And that's why he had to go into the forest for 12 years. Aru hated that story. The exile was completely unnecessary. His brother and Draupadi never forgave Arjuna when he explained that he had just had to get his bow and arrow. And why did he even go into the dining room? He could have just knocked on the door and shouted, Bro, I left my bow and arrow. Could you hand them to me? It'd be like asking a friend to pass you some toilet paper under the stall if you're in a pinch. But Arjuna didn't do that. Supposedly, this was a good thing. To Aru, it was just a bad use of time. Aru stared up at the statue. She not she might not be anything like Arjuna, but maybe having the king of the heavens as your dad wasn't a bad thing when you accidentally triggered the end of the world. Around her, the net of lightning vanished. In its place floated a golden orb no bigger than a ping pong ball. Curious, she plucked it out of the air and turned it over in her hands. The heck is this? But it was right about then she heard Minnie let out a sob. Aru turned to see Minnie sitting on a cloud clenching her backpack to her chest. The statue of Dharma Raja had moved and now loomed over her. The Donna stick had been thrown into, thrown from his hand, shattered the arrows headed toward Minnie. Death, she whispered. I'm the daughter of death. 
In all honesty, Aru thought that sounded pretty cool. Imagine walking to a party announcing, I am the daughter of death. You would almost certainly be guaranteed the first slice of cake. Plus, that would be the only appropriate time to use the brattiest phrase ever, wait till my father hears about this. But Minnie's eyes welled with tears. This ruins everything. I thought I'd be one of the daughters of Ashvin twins, the daughter of the god of medicine. What medical school is going to accept me if I'm the daughter of death? She rocked back and forth crying. A shadow cut across her room. She looked up to see Boo circling them. There was something strange about a shadow, though. It didn't look like the kind of shadow cast by a pigeon. It was massive. Boo flew to a roo's shoulder. He glanced at her, then at Minnie. Then he did it again. Boo was not subtle but about his hint. Go forth in comfort. Sighing, Aru walked over slowly. She crouched at Minnie's side and placed a hand on her shoulder. What? Minnie sniffed, sniffled. Aru thought about what she normally did to cheer herself up. She'd try to change the situation in her head. Look at it differently. It's not so bad, said Aru. In the stories, Yudhisthira was one of the Dharma Raja and no one ran away from him. Everyone went to him for advice because he was really wise and just and all that. He was a really good king too. And maybe as a doctor, you'll be even better because you're the daughter of death. Maybe you'll, you'll be able to tell faster when things are going wrong. Because you'll be able to sense death like a dog. Minnie's head lifted. Aru went on. Think about it. You'll be able to save so many more people. You'll be the best doctor. Minnie sniffed again. You think so? Maybe. Definitely, said Aru. It's all about what you do with what you have. Right, Boo? Boo huffed. See? Boo thinks so too. And he'd never lie. He's like a sworn guardian and all that. And he, he wouldn't try to steer you wrong. At this, something in Boo's expression retreated. He hung his head a little. Head a little. True, he said softly. Minnie stood up. She flashed a little smile. Without warning, she flung her ar arms around Aru and squeezed her tight, managing to catch a little of Boo's wing. He squawked. She squeezed tighter. Thank you, she said. Aru stood extremely still. She'd never been thanked, let alone hugged, after telling a lie. But maybe she hadn't lied after all. Maybe it wasn't a lie as much as it was a pl applying some imagination, looking at something from a different angle. That wasn't such a bad thing. And maybe this kind of thinking could actually help her make friends instead of lose them. Aru hugged her back. Thunder boomed in the sky. Aru and Minnie jumped apart. The statues of, of the Pandavas, soul fathers, disappeared, and the core of the skies rematerialized. Yervashi and Hunaman were perched at the edge of their thrones, their eyes wide. So is it true then, said Yervashi, her voice soft with awe. They're really, I mean, it is truly them. The Pandavas were being awakened to do battle once more, said Hunaman, rubbing his chin. Not all of them, said Yervashi, staring at Aru and Minnie. Only the reincarnated souls of Arjuna and Yudhisthira. For now, said Hunaman, darkly, if the sleeper isn't stopped, the rest will wake up too. A rube glance beneath her feet where the world had nothing more than a blur of trees and rivers. Somewhere out there were other people with Pandava souls. What were they doing? Were they frozen? Did they have some idea who they really were, like many? Or were they like her, completely clueless? The others will only awaken as needed. With increasing darkness comes answering light, said Boo. Even in chaos, the world will seek balance. Is this, the, is this the part where you say, do or do not, there is no try? Answered Aru. Boo scowled. If the sleeper is going to try and wake up the Lord of Destruction, he'll need the celestial weapons, said Hunaman. Do you know what that means, Pandavas? We should break all the weapons to the sleeper so the sleeper can't use them? Aru responded at the same time that Minnie said, we have to get them before he does. Oh, or that, said Aru. Hunaman regarded them somberly. The daughter of death speaks true. It took a moment for Aru to remember that daughter of death meant Minnie. So what would that make her? Daughter of thunder? Aru noted grumpily. 
sounded like a fancy name for a horse. Before I tell you of your quest, show me what gifts the gods have given you, said Yervashi. God's willing, they will ease the pain of your journey. Gifts? Then Aru remembered the golden ball that had appeared in Indra's lightning net vanished. She drew it out of her pajama pocket. You mean this? Yervashi's lips curled in distaste. In distaste. Minnie rummaged in her backpack and pulled out a small purple compact. This showed up when she choked on the words Dharma Raja claimed me. A plaything and a mirror, observed Yervashi. She turned to Hunalan. Didn't heroes used to get fine steeds or battle armor, swords even? Was Aru overreacting or was that a definite look of concern on Hunalman's face? Lord Indra and the Dharma Raja are enigmatic, he said. Minnie frowned. What's that mean? I think it means they've got flaky skin, said Aru. You're thinking of eczema. It means, said Hunalman loudly, that your fathers are mysterious, but other, but always for a reason. These gifts from them are intended to help you in your quest. A roof felt ridiculous. What good was a ball against a demon? That was like trying to stop an avalanche with a spoon. There's your proof, said Yervashi. Perhaps it means that gods do not wish the world to be saved. Or, squawked Boo, it can mean that this time we need a different kind of hero. Heroine corrected Minnie under her breath. Heroes, heroines, what well, that really was. Was that really what Aru was? Or was she just someone who made an epic mistake and had to do something epic to fix it? Yervashi had a faraway look in her eye. Her mouth was pressed into a slight line, a tight line. But a moment later, her shoulders dropped and she lifted her chin. Very well, come closer, children, to hear your quest. Aru and Minnie shuffled forward. The air kept them aloft. Wind rushed up and wrapped around them, and Aru shivered. This no longer felt like a fun roller coaster. The moment she'd seen that sparkling net cast by the god Indra, her heart had turned heavy. In theory, a quest sounded awesome, but in reality, a whole lot of lives hung in the balance. Maybe that's why superheroes wore capes. Maybe they weren't actually capes at all, but safety blankets, like the one Aru kept at the bottom of her bed and pulled up under her chin before she went to sleep. Maybe superheroes just tied their blankies around their necks so that they'd have a little bit of comfort wherever they went. Because honestly, saving the world was scary. No harm admitting that. And she could have done with and she could have done with a blankie right about then. Yervashi leaned leaned out of her throne. The sleeper needs the celestial weapon to free the Lord of Destruction. You must awaken the weapons before he does. To do so, you must go to the kingdom of death. Within the kingdom of death lies the pool of the past. Look inside the pool and you will discover how the sleeper can be banished once and for all. Scary kingdom, sleepy weapons, weird pool, got it. Okay, let's get this over with, said Aru. So where's the door to the kingdom? Is there an entrance here? Or maybe, normally you get to the kingdom of death by dying, said Yervashi. Aru and Minnie exchanged nervous glances. Any Minnie, started Minnie. At the same moment, Aru shouted, Nose goes! She smacked her nose. Minnie turned pale. Oh no! Children, said Yervashi, holding up her palm. There is a way to open the door of death without dying. You'll need three keys, but they are hidden and need to be found. The first key is a sprig of youth. The second key is a bite of adulthood. And the third key is a sip of old age. Aru stared at Yervashi. Okay, so which aisle of Home Depot do we go to? Minnie laughed. But it was a panicked, I'm definitely going to die kind of laugh. This map will help you, said Yervashi. Merely touch the symbol of the key and you will be transported somewhere close to it. But from there, it is up to you to find and claim the real key. Yervashi opened her hands. Aru hadn't noticed until now that images covered Yervashi's skin from the tips of, of her fingers all the way up to her elbows. It was Mindy a design made from the powdered leaves of the henna plant. They were temporarily tattoos that women wore during celebrations like weddings and festivals, but this design was unlike anything Aru had ever seen. For one thing, it was moving. 
On your washi's wrist, a branch sprouted blossoms, the sprig of youth, a book open and closed in the side of her hand, the bite of adulthood, a wave of water washed across her fingers, the sip of old age. But the very center of her palm was blank. You have nine days until the new moon, Pandavas. Less than that, perhaps, the time runs differently here than in the mortal realms, said Yavashi. Stop the sleeper from stealing the celestial weapons. Find out how he may be defeated from the pool of the past, and then you will receive Pandava training from the center, from the entire council. She paused to toss her hair over her shoulder, myself included. People would kill for the chance to be in my presence. In fact, they have, she smiled. Succeed, and your disgraced guardian can even rejoin the council. Boo shuffled from foot to foot on a rue shoulder. They'll succeed, I know it, he said. They have me to guide them. After all, I was illustrious. Was, said Yurvashi. Ignoring Boo, she grabbed Rue's hands, then Minnie's. When Aru looked down, the same Mindy map was covering her own skin. There, she said, your map. Fight well. For the first time, Yurvashi's smile turned warm, but there was something sad about it. She folded her legs beneath her and tucked her hands into her lap. She looked so vibrant and beautiful that it was hard to believe she had been present in all the ancient stories. Aru knew that Yurvashi had not only trained heroes, she loved them. She'd even marry one and had kids with him, but they were mortal. She must have, have outlived them. So young, Yurvashi muttered. It is not right. And with that, she disappeared. Hunama looked between Aru and Mini, the daughter of Lord Indra and the daughter of Dharma Raja. Daunting indeed. Before you leave the court of the sky, there is something I'd like to tell you. Daunting. That seemed like a good thing. At least she hoped so. Last year, everyone in homeroom took the divergent quiz on BuzzFeed, and she got dauntless as her faction, which apparently meant she was brave and courageous. So, yay? And if Hunamon, the Hunamon, thought they were daunting, maybe it wasn't so bad. But then she looked down at her hand with th the three symbols of the absurd keys. How exactly does one take a sip of old age? and her stomach turned. Nope, still bad. Hunaman opened his palms. A small sun hovered over his palm. It burned so bright that Aru wished she had sunglasses. When I was young, I mistook the sun for a fruit. Got in a lot of trouble for that, he said, sounding more pleased with himself than guilt-ridden. I clashed with the planet and threw off a, a scheduled eclipse. Your father, Indra, was so mad that he used his famous lightning bolt to strike me down from the sky. It hit me in the side of the face, which is how I earned the name Hunaman, or prominent jaw. He stroked it, smiling at the memory. I used to play pranks on the priests, too, so they cursed me, he went on. It was a tiny curse, the kind designed for mischievous immortal children. They punished you with a curse? asked Minnie. Just for being a kid? added Aru. They didn't seem very fair. They said I would never remember how strong and powerful I am until someone reminded me, said Hunaman. Sometimes I wonder if it, it was a curse that they were all under at some point or another. The small sun in his palms vanished. He patted her, their heads lightly. With a final nod at Boo, the monkey demi, demigod disappeared. Now it was just the three of them in an expanse of empty sky. Come along, Pandavas, said Boo. The map will guide us to the location at the of the first key. From there, it's up to you. Aru touched the image of the first key, the blossoming twig of, on her wrist. She felt a tug in her stomach, her breath caught. One blink later, the three of them stood in the parking lot of a strip mall. Where were they? It didn't look like Atlanta. Snow frosted the bare branches of the few spindly, spindly trees. Only a couple of cars loading vans were parked there. A shop girl dropped her cigarette when she saw them, but if she thought it was strange that two people and a pigeon had materialized out of nowhere, she didn't say anything. Aru felt a rush of relief. If the shop girl was still moving, it meant that the sleeper hadn't caught onto her, their path yet. Oh no, said Minnie. What's wrong? asked Aru. Minnie held up her hand. At the center of her palm, there was a symbol. 
It's the number of days you have left until the new moon, said Boo grimly. It is? Aru asked, looking at her own palm sideways. That's a weird-looking nine. It's in the Sanskrit language, said Boo. Minnie peered at her hand. Ashta, she said slowly. The number eight. Goosebumps fluttered down Aru's arm. It already lost a day. How do you know that? She asked, feeling a little jealous. I taught myself how to count to ten in fifteen languages, said Minnie proudly. Sounds like a waste of time, even Boo nodded. Minnie glared at both of them. Well, it's pretty useful right this minute, seeing as how we know we only have eight days left until the world freezes over and time stops. Aru straightened her shoulders. A cold wind tangled in her hair. She felt that sticky sense of being watched. Boo? What happens if the sleeper finds us before we find the weapons? Boo pecked at the sidewalk. Oh, well, he kills you, Minnie whimpered. Note to self, thought Aru, never go on a quest again.